what are the mechanical issues of creating structures that would do what cells do? There's a right. real architecture question on the molecular level. Absolutely. So, of course, all cells have an edge, a boundary, a cell membrane. And that cell membrane is made of, of fatty molecules, lipids. Uh, and they have a very beautiful property, which is these molecules, which can be extremely simple, will just spontaneously self-assemble into sheets and then close up so that they encapsulate some, some volume of liquid. So the, the picture that you see behind me is, a, again, a, a, just a drawing, an, anima an il illustration of, of a, a cell membrane a uh, very primitive cell membrane, sort of sliced open, and so inside you can see a few replicating RNA molecules. This is, this is the kind of really simple cell, uh, so we call it sometimes a protocell. Uh, the, the, it's much simpler than any living thing on the planet now, but maybe the first cells were something like this, something that could self-assemble given the right uh, collection of molecules. Can chemicals create membranes like that? Can, can so, so we often work with simple fatty acids. Uh, basically, they're, they're, they're soap, essentially. You take these molecules and shake them up in water, and they make structures like that spontaneously. And this video shows what would happen if you add more food, more fatty acids. These things grow spontaneously. I mean, it looks very lifelike. So these are like little bubbles, sort of connecting. They're like little soap bubbles, except in water. And if you add more fatty acid molecules, they'll absorb them, and they'll grow into these long uh, filaments. And then making those divide is very easy, because the filaments are very delicate. And the little video that's playing now shows one way that a filament can divide spontaneously into lots of daughter cells. So, so just very simple molecules in simple uh, physical systems uh, give you uh, phenomena that are just remarkably lifelike. And how close do you think we might be to actually taking some of those lab-based mechanical cellular creatures and filling them with enough RNA to cross this boundary? Well, so, so we've, we've done that, and we, we just published last year a result that I think for us was kind of a milestone. We could start to copy RNA sequences inside uh, model protocells like the ones that you saw. Now, if we could just go a few more steps and get that RNA to completely be copied and go through cycles of replication at the same time that the vesicles are growing and dividing, then I think we would have a cell-like system. It would be something that could start spontaneously evolving, which is what we really want to see. So you've, you've basically create, created soap-like substances that are nearly alive. They're, they're the, the, the boundary of the cell, but, right. but to really have life, to be able to evolve, you need an information system. So that's where the RNA comes in. If you come over to my house, though, uh, there's soap in our bathroom that is alive. I have five kids. I mean, I guarantee you. Um. <laughs>